Hey, Hickok45. You know, I was out the other day uh, in Nashville and I forgot my carry gun. Dangerous, right? Yeah, well, and all I had was $300 cash on me. So I ran by a gun shop and I got myself a gun. Oh yes, I did. And here it is. See if we can hit anything else. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, very much. <laughs> oh yeah. Hickok 45 making funnies again. You know, you probably keep a lot of your your files in the cloud. Well, I happen to find a gun up there in the sky. This is a Sky CPX-2. You probably figured that out right from the title. And I've had a lot of requests to try it. So I am. Take a look at this, baby. Close her up. Hammer fired, double action only. Polymer frame, well, with metal inserts. Stainless steel slide. This one is a nitride finish on it. Uh, it comes in a... You know, regular stainless, and then with this finish, the black finish as well. The CPX2, the CPX1, I understand, has a thumb safety, uh, external safety. This is the CPX2, it does not, and that's the biggest difference, I believe. Not an expert on these firearms, I know enough to be dangerous though. It's uh, an interesting little pistol that's not been on the market all that long. If you want a muffler like that, I can get you a deal on it. I promise you. <laughs> no, this is a pretty neat little uh, little pistol for the money. And it has it's gotten some pretty positive reviews. It's not expensive. It's, you know, it's not a SIG. It's not a Glock. It's not an XD. Not an XDM. But it's a company out of Daytona Beach, Florida uh, that has been trying to put together a quality little pistol for a very reasonable price. So the phrase you see a lot with it is it's a, it's a great little gun for the money. And of course a lot of people for that reason have been asking uh, me about it and what I think about it. And uh, I have had this now for oh, a month at least I guess. So I bought it and have been shooting it, okay? Now with a lot of firearms, we don't do that. We're not the ultimate gun testers of the world. We don't have an unlimited supply of ammo and time to do that necessarily. You can tell whether a gun's any good or not. Go to the forums, see people that have it, what their experience has been. So, uh, so we generally don't get into that in a great depth. You know, uh, my experience is just one person's experience, whatever it is. Anyway, I always like to hear what a lot of people think, what a lot of people's experience is with a firearm, which you can find very easily on the internet. But, uh, but anyway, I thought, well, why do it though, unless we don't shoot it a fair amount? You know, so. Uh, we have fired it now, we'll see, 560 rounds, exactly, I've been tracking it before the video, so that was two more magazines, and I, I grabbed a piece of cardboard, and I've been tracking, you know, my hits, and there's a bunch of garbage on there, but you can see I've been tracking it, and uh, I've got the feeds and double feeds and all that kind of stuff sort of tracked, so I wanted to give you an idea of what our experience with it has been, and I guess I'll reload a little bit while I'm talking about it, because... What is the most important characteristic of a carry pistol? Class, what do you think? Yeah, reliability, huh? And uh, that is very important. Now there's some other important characteristics uh, of a firearm, but uh, how it works is quite important. And uh, I wanted to get an idea of that before we you know, brought it to video and, and shot it, because I don't know that how much of that information is out there. Uh, so you just never know it might uh, not work at all for us or it might work uh, exceedingly well don't know and uh, you always are at a little bit of a risk when you are buying a firearm uh, at a bargain you know it's not necessarily the thing a lot of people right around left no, uh, are looking to do okay it's like I want to buy the cheapest fire extinguisher you know I want to <laughs> I want to buy the cheapest tire, or when I'm getting a roof put on my house, I want to definitely get the lowest bid all the time or the cheapest materials, you know, because we have a firearm uh, like this. Uh, 
as an emergency firearm, generally speaking, this is probably not going to be your first choice for a range gun, you know, if you just uh, just want to go plinking every Saturday afternoon. You're not even going to carry, you know, so it's probably not that type of firearm. Okay, so what have we discovered? Well, that's 580 rounds now, okay? So that's how many times we fired it. And bottom line right now is it seems to be ammo sensitive to me. We have had 10, 13, 14 different types of uh, failures to feed or fire in those uh, 560 rounds, okay? One of the most common things we've had uh, from time to time is just the round, it not going fully into battery. The uh, cartridge will be, you know, be about like that. It'll be kind of stuck in there and with a wrap on the back of the slide, and it, it goes on, okay? That's happened several times. We, hit, we did have some, uh, some, a couple of major, you know, hang-ups. With some ammo, specifically the arms core, we, <laughs> we try, I, don't ask me, I don't know why. But with the arms core 124 grain, we tried that. Like, okay, let's see if it's even better, uh, better ammo. And uh, we normally don't have any issues with that. But with it, we, we seem to have more trouble. And also, we got light hammer strikes. It wouldn't fire. Now, it does have that double strike capability. So when it doesn't fire, you can just pull the trigger again. And it, it worked all, whatever it was, three or four different times with that ammo. So for what that's worth. So I don't know. You may know more about arms core than I do, it may, uh, they may have some really, uh, be famous for having hard primers, I don't know. Okay, so that information, pass along to you. And what else did we fire? We fired a mixture of stuff, uh, 115 grain stuff mostly. And uh, that's why I was trying the arms core, it's 124. I thought, well, maybe that's the answer. It'll be more reliable with that. But actually it seems more reliable with the 115 grain ammo, okay? Now, with those malfunctions, it's hard to put it into perspective, uh, but we did have a string of shooting of 11 or 12. It was at least 11. I recorded it, maybe 12 or 13, but it was around 11 to 12 magazines. I just track it by magazines. They hold 10 rounds. Pretty easy. I called some math professors at Vanderbilt and said, look, we fired 50 magazines worth. They hold 10 rounds. How many rounds is that? They said 500, and then we went on to 560. So it's easy to track the number of rounds we fired. And we did fire, like I said, 11 magazines full at least with no issues at all, just smooth operation. And it was a mixture of 115 grain you know, rounds, okay? And also this uh, Aguila or Aguila, however you pronounce it, seems to work. I don't think we've had a malfunction with it. And I don't think I've had a malfunction with PMC. I guess I fired a whole box now. That's what was in the magazines when we started here. So. You know, we've had our share of malfunctions with it, but it seems to be ammo related. All right? so we're going to shoot it some more though. We just just still cranking with it. So you help me track the rounds. That's 580. So we will. Uh, we're going to shoot some more of the the PMC. I guess I just emptied and some of that. So let's take some more shots here. Got two mags. It's got a long trigger pull. It's double action only. I, the sights seem to be right on. Uh, if you're a new shooter, you would have some difficulty getting the knack of the trigger, I think. But the sights do seem to be right on because I have some difficulty with it. <laughs> it's a great training pistol because if you can hit those plates with it, it takes every ounce of focus you, you can muster because of that, that trigger. But uh, if really, uh, that answers the question though. If you shoot at some, you can master that long trigger pull because you know, it starts way up there. And then because of that, you've got a, a longer, it doesn't reset till it's all the way back. It's a double action, hammer fired, you know, pistol. It's the hammer's kind of internal, but you know, it's a real hammer there, all right? So that's what you got with that. Uh, all in all, you know, it feels like a quality pistol for $300. It really does. Let me show you how it comes apart here. I brought the screwdriver out. You just lock it back. You pull the pin out. You can do it with a fingernail if you're tougher than I am. 
and it comes right out and didn't really take all that prying I don't think it hasn't there we go I was kind of in an angle and it comes right off I mean it, it feels as though it's well made it, it has that feel about it you know nothing exotic or unusual about about that but it feels pretty good stainless steel slide and just bring it in the right way pretty typical of this this type of, of uh, pistol you know when it breaks down you got uh, like a full kind of a full length rail there you know and uh and that i read is, is is like the same material that ars are made of it's treated aircraft aluminum all this you know they're they they did all the right stuff in terms of making it this is zytel i believe and they even got a kind of a cushion back here it talks about uh to help cushion the recoil uh, for me, it doesn't really do that. It's really hard plastic. I don't I don't see any cushioning coming from that uh, You know your results may vary <laughs> But uh, and it is pronounced sky s-c-c-y CPX2 what else about that now with that long trigger, you know, you get a smaller uh, Spot or area there to get your finger in if you're wearing some big Alaskan gloves You'd have difficulty getting your finger in there and then of course you got that long long pull but as compared with some pistols like this, it, you know, it feels better to me, uh, even with that long trigger pull. And I, I, I could master this thing. Uh, I mean, well enough to carry it. I would, I would feel okay. Put it back together, just reverse it, and you make sure your barrel's forward there so the pin will go in. Uh, you know, it, it's doable. Uh, like I say, when I picked it up in Nashville, I felt well armed. That's upside down. Nope, turn it around. Uh, that was actually a joke but for 300 and actually uh, you'll see them I think at certain discount houses for for less than that for to, I, you know I can't even remember what I pay I paid I think I paid like 275 279 or something like that for it I, I just bought it at a gun shop and had been, had been hearing about it and a lot of people had been asking me about it and so I thought I'll just buy one and uh, check it out so had it, uh, I don't know, ran a month, like I say, shot it from time to time. And I have kept it clean and lube, too, okay? I want to be a valid testing of what I was doing, not, not a torture test. You know, maybe shoot uh, 100 rounds, uh, 150 rounds, and, you know, and then clean it. You know, shoot it some the next day or just whenever I think about it. So uh, that's kind of the way I've operated that, keeping it lubed. Well, it's the darndest thing. I, I don't understand it because sometimes, and it may not happen today. It would be great if it doesn't. Uh, when it just won't fully go into battery could be something about some ammo and how the bullet is seated but it's just a little bit longer or something maybe like 124 or 100 although I have fired some 147 grain ammo in fact let's try a little try some hollow points here these are some uh, Georgia arms I've had around for a while uh, used to be something I would purchase uh, pretty regularly and I just have some left but um, it, it we fired a magazine of these here just uh, before we started and uh, and then some other hollow points, and it fed them just fine. Now it was dirty. Let's see how it's doing. We hit that streak, like I said, of about 11 magazines, uh, trouble-free, totally trouble-free uh, magazines. After we had fired, uh, I don't know, 100, 200 rounds or so. It, it, uh, so I was thinking, okay, this thing just needed a little breaking in. But then we've gotten some more of that uh, negative reaction. Uh, as we try different ammo, that kind of thing. And I've got some other hollow points. Let's just go ahead and shoot it. It could be, you know, as with some smaller pistols we've all witnessed, well, there it is, that it, it needs hotter ammo, warmer ammo. This is kind of a mixture of some premium hollow points here. Uh, and, you know, with carry ammo, carry hollow points, it's very unlikely to malfunction. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we've put, uh, well now, about 600 rounds through it. That costs us as much as the pistol, so there's a limit to how many rounds I'm going to put through a $300 pistol that I'm never going to carry, probably, to determine whether it works or not. Even though you guys are worth a lot, right? But uh, let's just shoot these, see if they do okay. All right, let's reach out a little bit. Uh, uh, let's go for the gong. I don't know if I've shot the gong with it yet or not. Or, or the hold. I'll 
sure where I'm hitting. Well, I'm holding in the wrong place, even though it is difficult uh, at long range with that trigger. Let me bring it up some. I mean, the gun's not that inaccurate. I, I've shot it too much to come to that conclusion. I'm going to hold on the top of it. Okay, so it was just me. Just me. Try the propane tank over there. There you go. It's an unusual trigger, and for long, long range, it's especially challenging. Well, there's two magazines of those. Okay. So let's try something different here, too. We're kind of continuing the test. Some Winchester white box. We've not tried any of this in it, and uh, see how it's doing. Maybe it's getting broken in, and uh, I hope we don't have any trouble and you are suspicious that I'm making all the malfunctions up, you know. But uh, it may just be getting broken in, and we may be getting the right ammo in it here now. Uh, what else about it here I didn't uh, blab about. It uh, you know, locks back on the last round. The rear sight's adjustable. There's a little uh, a screw there you can let loose. and and adjust it if you need to. Um, it's, uh, it, like I said, if you've not handled one of these or picked it up even, it, uh, it's light. It weighs uh, just a little bit over 15 ounces with the magazine out. And uh, it's about, uh, well, I figure it's around five ounces less than the Glock 27. I've got it out, I was gonna weigh them, but yeah, I mean, it's, the Glock 27 is heavier. So it's a light pistol. Uh, that I'm told it's exactly the same size as a uh, Keltec PF11. I've never had one of those. I've seen them, and uh, it's about the same thickness as the Glock, the baby Glock, and so it's a, you know, it probably is about the same weight as the Keltec, because I think they're lighter than than the Glocks. But that's a kind of the size firearm you're talking about here. Okay, now we got Winchester White Box. <sighs> Let me go from the holster here. This is a carry gun. <laughs> All right. That's a holster for a Glock 26 or 17 or whatever. Oh, shooting left. Had a bad grip on it. You cannot release the magazine with the uh, slide lock or release a slide rather. Yeah, pull. I think on their earlier ones maybe you could, but they redesigned the slide lock. You get the right grip, get a good grip on it. Uh, you can shoot it pretty well. It does want to move around a little bit in my hand. It, 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 it whacks you, even a nine millimeter. It's kind of a hard plastic. It's a light gun, so it, it does, uh, you know, knock around a little bit. It's not like shooting a 40, but it. Uh, okay, now those shot fine, didn't they? John, they're not going to believe we had malfunctions. <laughs> you know what we ought to do? Uh, but I think you all know we are not in the the firearms bashing business. You know, I'm not interested in junk guns or even reviewing them. If it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't work very well, we just, yeah, we're just not interested in it. Uh, but uh, let's try this and see. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe there is a break-in factor here, and it has just reached that point. I don't know. But now with this, we did have a few issues, and we had, uh, that, like I said, the light strikes on it. Right, so I'm going to try to get the malfunction for you. Come on. Like I said, though, it, it, it feels like a quality little gun. It really does. For that kind of money, uh, you know, I, I'd say... Even with the issues we have had with it, uh, like as you can see, it tends to want to work, and it feels very well made. So it could be just a, an issue of getting it broken in and getting the right ammo. Now these, this is the arms core. Let's see how it does.
okay? There I didn't let the trigger reset on one of those. Gotta get that trigger all the way back, forward. Okay, that's what's happened right there. Like I say, the, those must have hard primers because it's not empty. There we go again. Okay, so see I didn't lie to you. <laughs> the uh, arms core does have a uh, apparently a hard primer uh, or you know the the spring is marginal on the on the pistol whatever it is so that's the arms core Let's keep that separate over there well that's good you know uh tended to work let's shoot just a few more and we'll wrap it up uh before i load those though there's anything else about it that uh i have forgotten to tell you that you're dying to know about it it's not a bad looking little pistol is it uh not at all it seems well made and the reading I've done about the company is pretty impressive. Uh, the owner is a, a really sharp fellow, has had some other successes in designing things, and uh, is attempting to put together a, really the best pistol I think he can, uh, maybe anybody can, in this price range. So let's just take a few more shots. Do we want to try a different ammo we've not tried yet on the last? Uh, Blazer Brass. We haven't shot any of this. Let's try, let's try that. Okay. All right. So maybe she is broken in now. Like I said, we had a string, at least 11 magazines. That's almost 110 rounds, right? Uh, where, you know, we had no issues, just like you're seeing now, except for the arms core. And so as with any pistol, uh, semi-automatic especially, you want to shoot, boy. Whatever you're going to carry, especially. And uh, weight bullet and length of bullet. Yeah, put a couple of the white box on top here. Make sure it's functional. Because there's nothing more important than the pistol functioning correctly. Okay? So, for the white box was in that. So we're going to start out with two or three white box Winchester there. And then we've got uh, all the rest of it's blazer brass. And we'll just wrap it. Oh, one thing I did want to point out. I put these on, you get, you get the flush uh, magazines with it. They make their own magazines, can you believe that? And uh, they seem to work, but uh, you get the flush uh, caps put on the bottom. I, I switched those out and I couldn't, after doing that, I couldn't get the magazine to seat. So I had to take them off. I prefer that actually. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try to shoot it fast maybe on something. We gotta save a bullet for that guy, don't let me forget. All right. <laughs> I say fast. It's really in how you grip this thing. All right. The desperados are after me. So I've got to draw and take care. <laughs> cannot machine gun it. You cannot machine gun it uh, too well with that long trigger pull and that long reset. But that's okay. You know what you got. You got a pistol that will... will work if you need it. Now you thought I was going to forget, didn't you? I'm going to back John up. We are not going to let that orange guy survive. No, I'm not going to be too close to it, John. Come on now. Get me away from that thing. I don't want to take a bath. It's too chilly out here for that. <laughs> oh, I did anyway. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We're empty. Well, okay. We uh, pretty much just figured out you're going to see what you see with this uh, and give you give you our history uh, with it. Uh, and it, it appears that with the correct ammo, uh, you could have some real success with this. I would avoid the arms core. <laughs> you know, we've not had trouble with the arms core, I guess, in anything we have fired. I've bought lots of that in all calibers. But uh, of all the different ammos we have tried in it, that's the only one where we've got light uh, hammer strikes with it. Okay, so... But that's what you want to do. You want to test uh, whatever ammo you're going to carry or even shoot a lot at the range. You know, it's, it's annoying to have problems at the range even. So the little Sky CPX2, man, I don't know. I'm not sure what my verdict is. 
uh, like I said, I've pretty much said it all. It's a, it's a, it feels like a quality little pistol. And uh, if you get one and test it and get the ammo it likes, uh, it might serve you as well as anything else. I don't know. So anyway, take it for what it is. Not a bad little uh, piece of hardware, you know, for the money. Life is good.